Rigetti Computing er, reporting earnings after the bell yesterday, announcing the general availability of its Cepheus I-36Q multi-chip quantum computer. You can see the stock's down a bit on results, up, though, almost 1,700 percent over the last 12 months. Joining us in a CNBC exclusive is uh, Rigetti CEO, uh, Subod Kolkarni. Subod, good to have you. Um, what advances have you most recently reported that are giving you the confidence to believe that the scale you need to start to really take on the hopes and dreams of all of those who focus on quantum computing will be here in as soon as four years? David, thank you for having me on the show. We are excited to launch our latest system, which is a chiplet-based system. So it's four chiplets of nine qubits each, so 36 qubits total at an improved fidelity of 99.5%, uh, what we call two qubit gate fidelity. That's the accuracy of quantum processing. Very fast gate speeds, about 60 to 70 nanosecond gate speed. And that's available for general public now on the cloud environment. This follows our previous announcement of uh, a single chip, 84 qubit system that we launched end of last year. Uh, that's at 99.0%, two qubit gate fidelity. So not only did we increase the fidelity with this new latest uh, system, but we also deployed chiplet architecture. And the reason chiplet architecture is so important is that's truly the only way you can scale up quantum computing to have thousands, if not tens of thousands of qubits. And that's what we really want. You mentioned four years. Uh, we have said that we need to, to get to quantum advantage, which is when quantum computing can demonstrate superiority over classical computing for most practical applications. We need roughly four things. Uh, one is qubit count has to be at least 1,000 qubits. The fidelity, the two qubit gate fidelity has to be at least 99.9% .9 or better. The gates have to be faster than 50 nanoseconds. And last but not least, it has to have real-time error correction. With those four things, we believe we will get to quantum advantage. That's when quantum computing becomes really yeah, exciting. Well, so what, what technical hurdles remain then? What, what are, will be the most challenging and obviously, you're competing here against the likes of companies with a lot more um, resources, whether it be Alphabet or IBM. So, you know, how do you see the technical challenges evolving for you and overcoming them? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are significant challenges when you are doing complex technologies like quantum computing. Uh, I don't want to undermine the challenges. A key one that we have overcome is with the launch of chiplet architecture and demonstrating high fidelity with chiplets there is a viable path to scaling up quantum computers to over 1,000 qubits now. So that's a key milestone that we demonstrated uh, this month. Uh, but there are other challenges. I mean, getting fidelity from the current 99.5% to 99.9% .9 is probably the biggest challenge we have ahead of us. And that's not a trivial challenge, but I view it as more of an engineering challenge. Just to give you a, a reference, the CMOS industry that we all use CMOS technology right now, we did similar things about 30 years ago when CMOS technology was at 99 and 99.5%. Today, CMOS technology is four nines or six nines, depending on the application. So we leveraging the semiconductor industry know-how. We know how to improve fidelity, but that is the biggest challenge we have ahead of us. Um, we will have to improve our gate speeds, but frankly, that's not as daunting a challenge as the fidelity. Uh, and uh, obviously, error correction, we are using it with classical computers right now. We need to do that with quantum as well. Can we just step back? I mean, we're still trying to wrap our arms around what an AI future is going to look like and how it's going to transform our lives. What, is, what does a quantum future look like? How do, you, how do you envision that changing business and everyday lives? Well, the stakes involved with quantum computing are huge. You will be able to solve problems that are unsolvable right now with classical computing and at the same time consuming a lot less energy than what classical computers are consuming right now. I'm sure you're fully aware of the energy requirements for the latest GPU systems, and they are daunting, to say the least. Quantum computers not only give you significantly better computing power, we are talking a million or a billion times better computing power, but also at a very small fraction of the energy consumption that classical computing uh, consumes right now. So there's a double win with quantum computing, both on the computing side as well as on the energy side. There are many problems that cannot be dealt with with classical computing right now, like weather forecasting. Certainly AI is a big one that everyone's looking at right now. And, uh, and the task of getting from Gen AI to AGI, uh, could quantum computing help that bridge that gap possibly? But there are many other problems too, drug discovery, material synthesis, the list goes on. Uh, encryption is a big one that everyone's fully aware of that what quantum computing can do and, uh, 
and the stakes involved with it. So there are many applications, uh, many studies have been done about quantum computing. The business is expected to be hundreds of billions of dollars a decade or two from now. But we are still very much in the R&D stage. We need to perfect the technology before all those numbers become meaningful. So our view is that the next three to four years, we are still very much in R&D. Technology right. milestones are the most important things. And beyond that is where, when the business becomes exciting from a, from a financial kind of, standpoint. You kind of buried the word encryption there, but that certainly is one of the existential uh, worries that those involved in crypto have. How do you mm -hmm. generally answer questions about crypto's vulnerability eventually to quantum breaking that encryption? Certainly, uh, quantum computers have shown for a while now on paper that they can easily break uh, the current encryption that we all use with classical computers. And that's certainly a big cause for concern, and that's where national security gets involved. Uh, all of us are aware that once quantum computers become real, uh, you can hack into any encryption code that we are using today. At the same time, there's a whole field evolving called post-quantum cryptography right now, where people are trying to see whether we can use quantum computers to generate encryption codes so they can, cannot be broken by quantum computers. So it's a race going on right now as to which one comes first. Uh, stakes are indeed very high, national security is at stake. So all of us are fully aware of what quantum computers can do. And encryption is one of the biggest reasons why many right. national governments are taking significant interest in quantum computing. That's why you see national quantum missions from various different countries and significant funding by the U U.S. government along with other governments for quantum computing right now. Uh, real quickly, Subodh, finally, do you have enough cash to get you where you need to be or do you have to keep raising money? <laughs> uh, fortunately, we have managed to raise enough money. We are uh, sitting at the end of last quarter, we are sitting on about $572 million cash and no debt. Our burn rate right now is roughly in the $60 million range. So we have, we have plenty of cash to get quantum computers commercial and get ourselves to a profitable stage. So we feel very good about that. Subodh, thank you. Complicated topic. We're going to try and keep an eye on it as best we can. Appreciate it. Thank you.